The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me. And it doesn't matter where you're at as long as you're here at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, we're up 14 points uh, at uh, 46, 27. 75 on the S&P cash. NASDAQ's up 10. It's been uh, eh, kind of falling behind today. Uh, the leader of the big three is the Dow, 30, up of almost about four-tenths of a percent. Uh, Russell's down about five. So we're just kind of playing around here. we got a few things going on. And uh, first is earnings, but that doesn't really happen until after tomorrow night. So, you know, when the first things you start thinking about uh, are, uh, you know, news headlines, that kind of stuff can make some earning or make some uh, difference when a market uh, just kind of flounders around a little bit. Um, what I wanted to look for before I started shooting my mouth off uh, was to verify uh, what is this? November 2nd and 3rd. Want to do a uh, Fed meeting uh, tomorrow. Of course, it'll uh, announce it'll be at 2, and we'll have a uh, presser between 2.30 and probably 3.15 or so. So we'll hear a little bit more about uh, the color on uh, some eventual tightening if it ever, ever happens. Uh, so we'll see about that. And so I think, you know, between that, earnings after the bell tomorrow night, uh, we're probably talking about fairly narrow uh, candles for the day. Uh, so that's kind of it. We're going to, you know, maybe individual stocks have a lot of movement, but they're not surprised to see a lot of other stuff out here just kind of sitting around. We've had some stocks uh, that were on the outs uh, at least come back into the trading range uh, and, you know, could be a little bit better. We'll see what happens in the coming days. Uh, I've got a long position that's mostly based on something that will happen on Thursday. That's in the uh, long-term newsletter. Uh, so we'll see what happens on that. But i got a few days before everything goes on that. But if uh, we get good news on Thursday, this is kind of a bank shot play. Other than that, uh, I'm more than willing to sit on my hands other, some, other than some uh, inside days uh, where we uh, – and where I'm uh, actually day trading, but of course, uh, I don't. I haven't done a lot of that, but lately I have, uh, mostly because there's a pretty good vehicle for doing so lately. But uh, there's kind of the quick and the dead, and uh, I don't know if even if someone's sitting next to me, uh, it would be quick enough uh, for them to follow what uh, we're doing in a day, but. Uh, on the longer time frames that uh, are set up for newsletters, eh, probably the best thing to do is wait and see what happens tomorrow afternoon. Uh, then we're probably going to hurry up and wait and see what earnings are after the bell tomorrow night. Um, to, 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 uh, okay, Wednesday after the close, we've got Roku, Etsy, Qualcomm, Fastly, uh, Skills, uh, Take Two Interactive. Energy Transfer Partners, Sun Power Corporation, Sandstorm Gold, uh, Magnite Electronic Arts, Cheesecake Factory, always makes me hungry, Cuervo, uh, QRVO, which is a uh, conglomerate of uh, smartphone kind of uh, companies, uh, supplier companies, Bookings, Holdings, and uh, eh, Fisker, eh, it's back from the dead. See if there's anything else out here. That's kind of it. And then you get into Thursday, but, you know, it's kind of tough to actually say what's going on uh, with a, a biotech like Moderna. So much happens uh, in the news, a very news-driven stock. 
A uh, few more gold companies, uh, Barrett Gold, uh, of course, on the rocks, uh, Nicola, which always makes me think of Ricola and the guy with the giant horn uh, and the sore throat. Wayfair, and maybe we're going to see how as we're coming out of lockdowns uh, that fares. Uh, but uh, that's it. I mean, uh, maybe a little bit of effect on the biotechs Thursday morning, but uh, eh, pretty much everything I'm looking at. You know, other than DraftKings, which is kind of a specific stock on Friday, uh, you can kind of start to see the waves uh, uh, cresting and uh, breaking before they hit the beach out here. But you, know, you always have to wait for them to still come on in. Give me a call today at 877-927-6648. We already have a few emails rolling in. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I'll look at that during the break. Uh, do, 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 did I? Yeah. Um, okay. Got one uh, called to look at in phase. And another one. Uh, okay. Do with that. And then another one I have to watch a YouTube video to give an answer for, although I'm pretty sure I've already seen this video. Uh, but uh, we got that. Let's do a little history, and then we'll move on, because uh, then we'll come back from the break. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. As we were talking earlier, was it this week or last week? I think it was last week, uh, about uh, how long it takes for some of the technology to actually make it uh, to the uh, uh, make it to the customer. Uh, on this day, uh, the first handheld AM transistor radio, the TR1 from Regency, uh, becomes a reality. Texas Instruments designed and developed the transistor technology, who then partnered with IDEA to design and manufacture the completed radio. The TR1 sold over 100,000 units uh, in the first year, ushering in the commercial transistor industry. It uh, did sell 150,000 units, although it was mediocre um but uh kind of the watchman uh of its day the sony walkman of its day small size and portability it had a weirdo battery uh it was the size of a nine volt battery we still use today uh but it had a pole on the top and the bottom of it they eventually changed those to the ones uh, that we have today um, still around, I still see people on YouTube uh, finding them every once in a while and trying to restore them. Uh, they were never great, but uh, compared to uh, hauling around a 200-pound radio uh, that sucked more juice than your alternator put out on your car sometimes, uh, not, uh, not too bad. But uh, just remember that first transistor, 1926, 1954 before the first commercial High volume product in 150,000 units, actually pretty good in those days. Of course, it didn't last very long. People ended up making ones much better. And Regency uh, made uh, what CB radios for a while, and it didn't go too far for them. We'll be back in a minute. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. As we come back, uh, Larry, I looked at your uh, video about the hydrogen generation and I fell asleep. I don't know what this guy's point is, but it certainly wasn't made very quickly. So uh, maybe you can uh, send me a link to the actual time where he's actually talking about what you think. Uh, question about in phase. E in short attention span theater guy here. I need to be. You need to put my, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen that video before. I'm just wondering what you're thinking the important part of that incredibly long and verbose and wandering statement is by the guy. Um, anyway, uh, in phase, uh, topping run out of gas, uh, 225 calls. Um, I think the worst part, um, is that you went over the previous high of 229 that had uh, six and a half million shares with uh, two and a half million shares. You're going sideways now. Probably more than likely you'd come back to 190 uh, and fill half that gap would probably be pretty interesting. But now if I was, uh, especially you got the rest of the day, probably tomorrow, and maybe into Thursday before anything starts moving. Um, I don't know where you bought the 225 calls. I'd probably take the money and run. I don't think a lot's going to happen in the next day or so. You can always buy back uh, a position. But uh, eh, you got a couple things up here that says you got a lot of energy off that gap. But, yeah, I, you could just go sideways here. So I'd rather go and take the money and run on in phase as we talked about it. Uh, okay, so we got that. Uh, we'll be uh, talking all about the Fed tomorrow and the uh, comments when the show starts. So we've got that. Uh, and uh, what else do we have? Uh, that, uh, okay. And uh, I was going to talk about this uh, yesterday, but the power was out uh, at, uh, yeah, where's that at here? 
at the headquarters, so I wasn't on. Uh, but I was going to talk a little bit about a couple of stocks out here. VMW. VMW. Uh, the split is final uh, for the divorce between um, uh, Dell and uh, VMware. And it's unclear just how much uh, Michael Dell uh, uh, looted and pillaged from VMware before it came out. Um, I figured it was going to be down either a little or a lot yesterday and uh, didn't get to get in front of it. But it was uh, eh, kind of interesting. Anyway, a lot of volume down. You blew through the lows. Uh, I think it's probably going to take a quarter or two to everybody figure out what they did to it. But uh, my guess is uh, that they stole everything they could, uh, pushed this off. But uh, I think there was an 80% uh, part of Michael Dell and VMware for a while, and now that's all gone. Uh, but uh, eh, one day late because of the power being out. Okay, da, da, da. okay, what else do we have? Uh, Pete asks, uh, do you see lithium ion fi uh, phosphate batteries replacing lithium ion batteries due to safety issues with lithium ion batteries? And uh, the answer is no. Uh, I, I'm pretty convinced that everybody in the rest of the world is looking at hydrogen. And the re there's two reasons. One, it's probably easier to handle, especially in cases of fire. The fire goes up. It just doesn't burn for five days right there where the batteries are. It'll be, uh, if there's any uh, leak, uh, it will pretty much uh, be over in a matter of minutes, uh, not burn for hours as you dump more water on it. Now, his case, I think, is that the phosphates would be able to at least be put out. Uh, there's some other news out there with other lithium ion people with uh, silicon uh, cathodes and anodes. I think it's cathodes. Uh, but that's kind of the, the part that goes on the uh, positive or negative end, uh, anodes and cathodes. Uh, but uh, you know what? Even with uh, a lot of what people are talking about uh, in uh, advancements, it it, at this point, they're apparently so expensive that they're only talking about putting them in things like cell phones uh, and uh, other devices like uh, very expensive devices. So that makes me think that the, uh, the weight um, is fairly expensive, uh, is uh, probably still fairly up there, even though they've been able to. I think the one I saw this morning from uh, John in Philadelphia, um, they're saying that they've gotten the watt, uh, the watt per liter up by about 30 uh, percent, but uh, no talking about what the actual expense is. But, uh, you know, if you're talking about a uh, lithium ion battery costing twenty dollars in a cell phone and it costs uh, twenty five or twenty eight bucks, uh, but you get 30 percent more talk time. That's one uh, thing. If you're talking about a car that has a $25,000 battery, like uh, if you lose yours in the Tesla after the warranty period, you're talking about 25 grand. So let's say that uh, it's 50% more expensive. So you're talking about a, what, a $42,000 battery to get 30% more range. Um, that will only uh, find a lower price after time. Uh, the economies of fuel cells are well known. Uh, the ability to turn uh, methane and other gases uh, into uh, hydrogen is pretty well known. And why it's fairly inefficient to do that, what is extremely efficient is that 20 pounds of uh, hydrogen is worth 2,000 pounds of batteries. And let's say that uh, with this new technology, 20 pounds of hydrogen is only worth 1,750 pounds of, uh, of battery. That's still pretty horrible. Uh, when I raced motorcycles, uh, the universal theory at that time was every horsepower uh, was equal to eight pounds. If you could take eight pounds off the motorcycle, uh, you'd give uh, the, uh, that was worth uh, giving yet another horsepower uh, to the engine. 
So you kind of have a, a fairly uh, significant amount, um, you know, much different on a motorcycle. You're probably on a car. You're probably talking every 50 pounds, probably 10 horsepower, because you got so much more weight that you have to stop, and so much more weight that you have to accelerate uh, in the uh, takeoff phase. So, I'm still thinking that there's a reason why Panasonic uh, in all of Japan and all of Germany uh, is going for hydrogen. And I think, uh, quite on the surface, it sounds expensive. Uh, the weight savings is fairly big. Now in uh, aircraft, somebody's got a very, very great use uh, case for hydrogen. Um, I think brought it up. We'll talk about it when we return. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return, uh, Hector says he's got... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Um... Uh, he didn't say he's got anything. Uh, what kind of move can we spec out of NVIDIA from uh, NVIDIA reporting on the 17th? You won't really know until about two or three days before then. So options today aren't going to tell you a whole lot about what's going to happen into earnings. They're only telling you what's going to happen uh, probably across the next week. But uh, hard for me not to think that uh, 
you know, the, you, you're probably kind of a little bit toppy out here in NVIDIA. Uh, but like I said, it depends on what your time frame is. Uh, these guys can sell four times the amount of product that they can build today. Everybody should have that kind of problem in business. Uh, they also make enough margin in where they can outbid everybody else for the stuff that's shorted. Uh, same thing with many other companies uh, out there. If you make 65, 100% margins, 200% margins, 500% uh, margins in some products like Intel server chips, um, the, that is something. You can afford to absorb it. If you're making 5%, uh, like Texas Instruments selling uh, $1 chips to people uh, that are probably not paying you for six months anyway, like the automakers, probably uh, uh, holding you off at arm's level saying checks in the mail. Uh, much different uh, story. You can't afford to absorb that kind of stuff. So if you're a manufacturer in the automobile business, something costs you 17 bucks uh, to build like a circuit board. E 19 bucks is a deal buster. Uh, for a lot of those folks. That's just the way they think. Uh, they've had uh, 100 years of, uh, of that, and it's tough for them to figure out that sometimes it's worth it. As they said, Ford probably did the best thing by going back and ordering analog steam uh, gauges from, uh, uh, from Mexico that they used to make that were plug-in replacements for the Ford 150. So they continue to pop those out quite nicely. Um, I think your your run is probably fairly close uh, to being over. My guess is it probably goes sideways into earnings for a while. So if you were along this, I'd worry about it kind of coming back to about 240, or excuse me, yeah, about 240, 238-ish. Uh, and that wouldn't negate a bigger move higher. But uh, I don't think you've got a lot out here. And again, any kind of pullback in NVIDIA, uh, is pretty much now a buying opportunity as long as they can sell four times of what they can make in any month. And if they could meet demand on a monthly basis, it would still probably take six months for them to catch up. So it, it's is you know it's more of a supply thing than a demand thing, and that's not generally what you have in 99.9 .9 or 99.8. What was pure? Ivory soap, 99.9 .9 or 99.8? Hard to remember. Anyway, uh, NVIDIA, uh, some of these companies like AMD, uh, Intel coming out with their new chips this week. Uh, there's a lot of companies out here that could break uh, the overall um, thesis of semiconductors with the shortage. So you just know that there's a lot of them out there. But there's a lot of these uh, companies you know, when they make their products, it's like printing money, um, software-like kind of margins. And a handful of these companies are like that. Some of them are commodity companies like memory companies. Uh, but, uh, you know, when commodities like gold um, in the uh, 2000s starts moving, sometimes it takes 10, 12 years before it runs out. I think we probably, in several sectors in the semiconductor space, are going to see that. We've got to go to Gary in uh, New Buffalo, not Old Buffalo, the New Buffalo, Michigan. How are you doing today? Hey, Dave. It's always great to talk to you, and uh, you do such an amazing job with that knowledge of uh, I've learned so much from you, from, uh, the, you know, <laughs> what a resistor is. Anyways, but um, but it's, um, I thank you for all that, and then I've got a company i've invested in pretty heavy and i'm uh got it's getting hit in the options in the last like 60 days 90 days because of uh some problems in china uh but that's their biggest market but they report earnings after the close tomorrow and uh i'm just curious you, you raised my interest because you were just talking about you know knowing maybe a day or two and you do you're so astute on options i thought maybe you could take a look at that and then give me any read in the tea leaves if you've got any which way it's going to go because They've already guided down, but uh, they have another product, a uh, collagen product, that's just going to be their number one product after 38 years to replace the uh, uh, vitamin pack that we've had for almost 25 years as the number one product within the next six months. That's how fast it's growing. So I'm trying to figure out if there's a play here for me. And it's definitely a play. It's not an investment. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, what I can say is it's only got about 5% of it for a, a company that's given it up. Uh, it's only got about 5% short interest in it. It's only got about uh, 8% yesterday. So, I mean, this thing, even through the hor horrible days, only had uh, its biggest day had 15% shorts. There's not a lot of people on it. I don't know if it's just not short, uh, if it's just not there or people not want to give it. But generally, if I was looking, or you're looking for a long position? Correct. Yeah, there isn't a lot here. I like to see a lot of people, you know, into earnings offside, and you don't have it. So if this thing even uh, starts to move lower, there are not going to be a lot of people to save your bacon. So there isn't there isn't any kind of social safety net underneath here that says when this goes lower, there's going to be a great deal of buyers. That's generally yeah, the best. The generally the best thing you can have when you go into earnings is a bunch of shorts because unless they really just uh, brown the bed uh, on earnings, you know, you can see uh, where you at least have somebody willing to buy it, right? You got right. not a whole lot of shorts on here on the other side of it. And this is when these things really do surprise people and you have nobody that's a natural buyer on the other side. So, got yeah. it. <laughs> got it. Okay, that's so, a big help. Yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I, you know, after earnings, um, you know, if I was just looking at this not knowing that earnings was coming, I'd say you've got some fairly good support here. Um, just looking at uh, some of the other things out here, there isn't a good read on this. There aren't a lot of people short. Maybe they short tonight uh, going into it, but there's just not a lot here. And that's uh, the scourge of stocks heading lower is people not shorting it. Because at least when they short it, there's generally going to be a short squeeze at some point, and you might be able to get out on it. There's just nothing here. Gotcha. Hey, um, while okay. I got you, though, that's great. And I, I've, I've got enough at risk. I mean, i got a huge amount of risk in my December and uh, March options. So uh, I needed to have a bottom and start, start reversing here pretty quick. Uh, but um, what are you, on that idea of the short squeeze, what about the mm -hmm. TLT? Is that set up if, if, if this interest rate, you know, um, uh, start rates start going down, um, and if that's they a, start going down with any any, you know, volume. Yeah, that's a good question and and a complicated answer. You want to hang on? Yeah, I'd love to. Or if I, I have to, if I have to drop off because I'm meeting somebody, I'm certainly going to be listening tonight. Okay? okay, we'll be back in a minute. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Direction's Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. We're back. Uh, is uh, Gary still on, or did he have to go? You know, I'm going to try to stay on, Dave, but I got dropped once during the commercial. So if I get dropped again, I'll just be listening in. So I appreciate okay. it. Uh, I'm showing on uh, the screen right now my application, which is a database application for um, taking uh, data, putting it all together. Uh, but... Uh, I'm going to show this column here in the TLT. One of the things that most people don't know is that uh, ETFs do not have to report and do not report uh, short sell numbers into them, except on a daily basis. And you don't know how many of those people covered before the end of the day. The bi-monthlies are for equities only. And every two weeks, uh, the NASDAQ and the NYSE will report that data but it's 10, it's 10 days behind in the rearview mirror. Uh, FINRA uh, does report every night, uh, I think about 8, 8.30. Uh, uh, and you can go to the website and look at it. You have to put a couple of files together to actually add them all. But uh, for the most part, you can get a good kind of idea. But uh, you know, with a lot of ETFs, uh, you might see it if there's not an opposite one. But on the TLT, guess what? There's a TBT. So what you really want to be doing is looking at the vault comparative volumes in the TBT to the TLT to see uh, where the yin and the yang is for the people thinking the uh, uh, the thing goes up. But uh, neither one of these is a short percentage is uh, even kind of a clue. That's just because by by a. Uh, 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 just regular, uh, eh, what can I be trying to say here? Uh, by, oh, this is a reverse, uh, by normal things, you're just, you know, you have to kind of compete or compare the two to kind of get a feel of what's going on. Um, and it's not an easy thing, but you need, if you're lucky enough, you have a, both a bull and a bear with the same, uh, uh, leverage le uh, and you can look at them. Uh, the problem is that a lot of times people are wrong. In fact, more than not, people are wrong in the bonds. Uh, and it takes a while for them to come back out. They may be wrong for three or four days and then right for a couple of weeks or something. But right now, there isn't a whole lot. Um, does that answer your question? There's not a whole lot out here. Uh, yeah, it, so it could go either way. Yeah. The, the, the problem is that you have to know what a handful of people are thinking. And the stock market's based on the idea uh, originally in Sherlock Holmes, uh, uh, not his book, but um, in one of his mysteries where he says, uh, um, an a, a individual is a, a mystery, but if you put enough people together, uh, you'll have a, a pretty good certainty of what most people think. And the problem is when you get down to like a, a, an individual, like a president or a treasury secretary or the head of the fed they constantly say one thing and do another so 
I, I don't like to make bets on that. I like to make bets on the wisdom of crowds and sometimes on the madness of crowds. Uh, both sides of those are fairly uh, indicative, uh, especially when, you know, there's a bubble or something. You want to go against the madness. And when uh, there's a pretty nice bell curve in the market, you want to go with the wisdom of the crowds. So, you know, all I got to say is, especially in this next couple of days, I tend to stay stand back and let the madness uh, kind of come out once they say th whatever they're going to say. Then you can go back to trading. But, you know, even um, things like uh, econ economic reports, you know, they can be colored by the government so much. But over right. time, you get a fairly good trend. You just never know when somebody like uh, Powell's going to wake up and decide to go nuts or do something. I, I'm just not. Uh, it, it feels more like a bet than it does prudent uh, uh, trading, if you know what I mean. Got it. Okay, great. Okay. I might call you back next week after it all shakes out because I love that. You're, it's fa you're fascinating. Okay, thanks for all that great info. You bet. Thanks bet, for, uh, thanks for all that. The check's in the mail. Um, let's see what we've got here. Anyway, let's go ahead and look at the TBT because he didn't really say anything, or TLT, which is generally what I look at because it seems to be the most one that tracks well. Uh, we went up to a high. We tested it. We pulled back with some decent volume yesterday. We're up on almost nothing. We're on the high side, though, of the 3x3. Three three. And, of course, guess what? This is all uh, moving uh, by headlines, by spending, uh, backed by bond vigilantes. And another one pretty hard to call. Um, I would say that the best thing to do is stay out of stocks that are interest rate sensitive uh, because, again, probably more of a gamble of what he says. But if you're in Apple and you're thinking it's going higher or lower, uh, what he says tomorrow probably ain't going to matter a hill of beans. Uh, if you're in other stocks that make and have huge margins, uh, going to be one thing. If you want to go short, generally you want to go short uh, stocks uh, that don't have huge margins. And where he says something is on the uh, or, uh, on the uh, on the bearish side in the market that could really hurt something like a grocery store, or an Amazon making six percent on what it sells uh, to people every day. There's a lot of that going on, um, but uh, there's always going to be a part of market that does well, that does poorly, and one that ignores uh, whatever the narrative of the day is. Uh, my guess, like I said, just not that much going on. Uh, 877-927-6648, as we said, kind of really uh, thinking about what's going on. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> the lizard companies. Uh, any thoughts on better performing LIDAR companies uh, from Sandy? And no. LIDAR is 20 times more expensive uh, than video cameras. I don't know of any car company uh, that will make a living at it. Maybe... Uh, some lower volume stuff. But uh, just to give you an idea, when we were making electronics, uh, uh, con uh, not consumer electronics, but industrial electronics, the thought is if something costs you $30, you have to sell it for $90 uh, to, make a, uh, to get through everything and pay you all the bills and still make money. So there's kind of that kind of s thing going on. Car companies, again, uh, and we'll talk about Tesla maybe in the last segment here. Um, tend to make six to eight percent over the last hundred years, six to eight percent. Uh, Tesla says they've broken that. I think the books are vastly uh, cooked on Tesla. Uh, but, you know, they were cooked for four years on Enron and uh, 15 years uh, for Bernie uh, Madoff. Uh, you can go a very long time sometimes if you've got a very short or very sharp pencil. So I'm just waiting for the, the turn in that. Uh, but again, um, I'm not a fan of LIDAR. They're going to have to make it. They're going to have to bring down the cost 10 orders of magnitude. Is that right? You're going to have to bring it down. Yeah, to be the same as video cameras uh, and uh, AI chips. So I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, back in a minute.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And back, uh, any thoughts on Spotify? As I said, this stock came out weird. Uh, the only thing I really know about Spotify is the war between Joe Rogan and CNN. And, uh, and it's pretty easily explained. Uh, Pfizer is a big sponsor uh, and advertiser on CNN. So they'll continue to go after a guy that has 10 times the audience they have. I think that's uh, short-term good for them getting money from the uh, vaccine industrial complex. Uh, Long-term, probably not a smart idea. Uh, you got 100 million uh, viewers of uh, Rogan, and maybe if you're lucky in a month, you get 10 million at CNN. So um, for Spotify, I think it's good uh, for the stock. Um, just the bizarre way the thing came out and everything else, I've stayed away with, from it and don't think much. But uh, every time we get that, you know, they say no bad uh, advertising is, uh, or no advertising is bad, and yeah, probably good for the stock price in Spotify. Okay, uh, and uh, my final comments on Tesla here. Um, I've made a lot of money on Tesla. I've also missed a lot of money on Tesla. But I didn't lose a lot of money on Tesla. I found uh, waiting for the signal uh, seems to be in the euphoric mode that almost everybody's been in. 
could this run into Christmas? It certainly can. But uh, the idea that just because you miss something means you can't make money on it is silly. I watched uh, natural gas go from 10 bucks to 16 bucks and then made an absolute pile of money back in 2006 uh, shorting natural gas. Um, stocks go up, stocks go down. Uh, it's a lot easier to know when the bubble bursts than knowing how high that uh, balloon will go. So I'll be on the opposite side of this, uh, but it hadn't cost me any money. Uh, there are 5,800 stocks that are probably tradable every day. Um, this is just one of that that I didn't trade. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.